Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Elliott Homestead. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Stu is busy all day. He's tied up with school activities. And so I am going to instead take you around with my phone, which we never do. And I'm just going to force myself to have the eyes to see all the things that I'm thankful for right now here on the property. It's really easy, especially when you homeschool and you farm to feel like you're always behind on something this time of year, but that's not the truth. The truth is that things are happening just as they should in the time, just as they should. And I really want eyes to see that. So I'm gonna take you around the property on my phone uh, since Stu is unavailable and I am going to have eyes to see my favorite things around the property right now. I'm not going to concentrate on the projects that need to be finished. I'm not going to concentrate on the dirt piles or the garbage or the grass that needs to be mowed. I am going to concentrate on the beautiful things that are bringing my heart joy in the hope that they bring you a little bit of joy too. So I appreciate you being here with me today, even though it's another video that's kind of breaking form a little bit. Stu will be back next week with me. Maybe I can even tag him in to get our rhubarb curd on later on in this video. We'll see. But for now, let's Let's go appreciate some beauty. Our house is surrounded by cherry orchards and right now they're in full bloom. There are bees and pollinators everywhere and that is something to be thankful for. This is such a short time of year. The blossoms come and go in just a matter of days. So if you don't stop to smell the blossoms, you miss them. In addition to that, we have our best tulip showing ever. Even if they're in gardens with quite a few weeds, quite a few holes that need to be filled, they need to be spread with compost. But right now, in spite of all of that, they look amazing. Last year, we lost all of our apricot blossoms to a really late frost. This year, our tree is in full bloom and I'm so happy to see it back. In addition to that, our irrigation piping that we run through our market garden is holding strong. We had no fixes over the winter and the well is full of water. So I am very grateful for that. we didn't have the ability to irrigate from our own well, we wouldn't be able to grow the crops that we grow. So irrigation is very important. I am also grateful to always have people around to give me hugs. This has been our best lambing year yet. We have 12 live, healthy lambs on the ground, which is about three times as much as we usually have. So we are going to have a wonderful herd to grow out this summer. Cece, our dairy cow, is very plump and very pregnant. And I am so grateful that in a few short weeks, we'll be back in milk. We've been really diligent about adding fresh layers to our flock every year, and they have blessed us with so many eggs over the winter and spring. Last year, we kind of went through an egg famine, but this year we have been flush with eggs all throughout. So I'm really grateful for that. Even the waste here on the farm is something to be grateful for because this makes wonderful compost. Our plum tree, which has never leafed out or had blossoms, is in full force this year for the first time ever.
there are little hidden treasures and little special things to be thankful for all over. I'll tell you something I'm really thankful for this season, and that is a new dishwasher. We have had a non-functioning dishwasher for years now. It is so luxurious to have one that works so well. There is food in our bellies and in the cupboard, and that is something to be thankful for. Along with the mess and the chaos and the creativity, that comes along with homeschooling every day. As challenging as it is for us to all be home and to meet the needs of all of our children, I cannot imagine doing it any other way. And lastly, I am so grateful for a hardworking husband who faithfully serves our family, serves other families in our homeschool co-op, and meets the daily needs of the Elliott Homestead and the farm. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. Thanks for taking a little bit of time with me to go around the farm and just focus on the things to be thankful for. It's really easy to feel like you're just getting behind this time of year. We're finishing up homeschooling, we're getting the gardens going for the year, and when all of that happens, uh, it just feels like the wheels are falling off, frankly. And while it may seem a little counterintuitive to come into the kitchen and create a little bit more work, there's something about the process of cooking, of putting beautiful, simple ingredients together that really grounds me. So when things feel a little chaotic, this is where I come. When I feel the most frazzled and the most crazy is when I don't get to spend time right here at my stove, at my tabletop, just doing this wonderful work with my hands. So I wanted to make something really simple and really delicious with you today. I'm gonna put a link below this video for our cooking community. This rhubarb recipe was originally posted as a cooking community recipe over three years ago. So if you would like to learn a little bit more about the recipes that we create each month and the instructional cooking videos that go along with those, make sure you check out the details of the Elliott Homestead cooking community below this video. There's lots of information there so you can sort of gather and get inspired. And that's what we're gonna be creating today is a recipe from the cooking community. So this is a rhubarb curd. It's really simple, really wonderful to make and perfect for when rhubarb is in season. All right, so we just need a couple of ingredients for this. Honey, eggs, a little bit of flour, some good butter, uh, some lemon if you would like it, and some beautiful rhubarb. So, oh, what a wonderful thing this is. Rhubarb will start out kind of looking like these little bulbous things in the garden, and then overnight, it seems like it just goes crazy. I shared over on my podcast uh, a couple of episodes ago that I'm trying to take it easy on myself in the garden this year. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get around to making my rhubarb chutney or my rhubarb curd. I would like to, but I'm not trying to put uh, too much pressure on getting that done, which actually is kind of liberating because it means that I get to enjoy fresh rhubarb. Oftentimes, especially the red rhubarb, I'll hold off on eating fresh because I really want to save it for all of my preserves that I make. And um, I'm trying to look at it a little bit differently this year and just really looking at it as savoring what I have when I have it right now. Um, so, I am just cutting up my rhubarb stalks here. I probably got a few too many. 
So I'll just do maybe two or three more. The leaves of rhubarb are poisonous, so you need to compost those. Make sure your animals don't get them. But the stalks are wonderful and beautiful and tender. So I am just cutting about five or six stalks of rhubarb into one inch pieces. Now, <clears throat> uh, I do say that I'm gonna make easy recipes a lot here. And there's a reason for that because these are the kinds of recipes that I can make in my kitchen. This is what's possible for me to do. You can see how easy this starts. I'm just throwing rhubarb into my blender. Now into the same blender, two teaspoons. I'm just using an all-purpose einkorn flour. I'm going to add in three eggs. The chickens have been laying very well, which makes me quite happy because spring eggs are the best <laughs> and they are in season. Um, okay. Now we are gonna cook this to thicken it up. So I have three quarters of a cup of a good butter and that's just gonna go into this saucepan and start melting. Now we only have one more ingredient. So we have our rhubarb, we have eggs and flour. Now we're going to add in three quarters of a cup of honey. Um, sadly, we lost our honeybees over the winter. I was really bummed because they made it a long ways into the winter and they had plenty of food. Uh, which is just such a shame, but that's just the way it goes. And I spent some time really early spring this year extracting the honey that was left over. So this is some honey from our own bees, really wonderful. And I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna bring bees back this year. We have a really wonderful and very skilled bee farmer just up the road from us. Um, who doesn't have the same issues that I have. He's able to produce honey just really wonderfully and without uh, all the headache. So we'll see. I love having bees on the property because I love meeting them out in the garden, but. Okay, three quarters of a cup of honey and I'm going to add in the juice of this wonderful Sicilian lemon that I have um, because I just love it. But you can certainly omit that if you like. And instead, if you wanted, you could add in the beans from a vanilla pod or a little bit of vanilla extract, um, but I'm gonna go for a little bit zippier of a flavor with this lemon. So this is gonna go um, on the machine. It's gonna process for about three minutes at fairly high speed so it gets totally smooth, which is gonna pulverize that beautiful fresh rhubarb into teeny tiny little pieces. In the time that it took that to blitz nice and smooth, I was able to clean up my mess. So really wonderful. I love when that works out. I have a fine mesh strainer here. I'm gonna put the rhubarb mixture into the butter mixture um, just to take out any pieces of rhubarb that are left. I wanna make sure this is nice and silky smooth like a proper curd. So you might have to do this in a couple of batches. Now, I have made this before um, in a food processor. And it can help if you only have a food processor to steam the rhubarb a little bit before you blitz it. Um, I don't need to do that in this because it gets fairly smooth. But if you only have one, just steam your rhubarb a little bit so it's nice and soft because otherwise it won't get it smooth enough and you'll just miss a lot of that beautiful soft pink color. Um, you'll leave a lot of rhubarb behind. So this is the most involved piece of the whole recipe, which is just straining it. Now, if you want a super smooth curd, you can actually strain it twice. This is straining one. And then once we cook it and it's nice and thick, you can strain it again. Just in case you're worried about having any pieces in there, if you're worried about the eggs cooking at all. Perfect and pink.
Somehow I managed to break my Vitamix pitcher. So now it pours a little funky. <laughs> All right, once you've extracted as much as you can, you can compost the rest. I'll just set that aside. Um, so all that's left to do now is just whisk this together with the butter. And because of the butter and because of the egg and because of that little bit of flour that we put in, it's gonna get nice and thick like a pudding fairly quickly. You can already see it changing. It's this beautiful peachy blush pink color. Um, I also grow green rhubarb here, and I've used that as well, and it doesn't make that pretty pink color, but it tastes the exact same, <laughs> so. Oh, it just smells like spring. It smells like spring. So some people eat this curd just by itself. You can put it on toast or scones or biscuits or muffins. Um, you could use it to make a cobbler or put it on top of a little butter cake. Lots of wonderful ways. You can eat it warm. You can eat it cold. You can eat it out of a jar, just on a spoon. You could put it on some vanilla ice cream. Multitasking. It's important in the kitchen. So sometimes when I make this curd, I like to put it into little individual ramekins and top it with something like fresh whipped cream or vanilla ice cream, or maybe some toasted pistachios. Um, but tonight we're gonna be having it with pizza. And so we're just gonna keep it just as is, just beautiful, fresh, silky rhubarb curd to have after we have our homemade pizza. So this is actually gonna go into the refrigerator to chill for just a little while. It'll set up even more once we do that. And I think we are just about done. One of the things I really love about tasks like this in the kitchen is that, yes, life is busy and it's a little bit hectic right now, but when I'm standing here and I'm stirring the rhubarb curd, I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about the ironing that needs to be done or the bills that need to be gone through or the porch that needs to be swept. I'm just thinking, hmm, how does this curd look? Is it nice and thick? Did I get my proportions right? I wonder how it tastes. I wonder what I have to serve it with. And I'm just focused on the task at hand. And it's one of the few moments in my world where I'm only thinking about what's, what's in front of me. And I think that's where you kind of get that mental peace from when you're in the kitchen, because you're just trying to do a good job. You're trying to make something delicious that people are gonna enjoy. And that's what you're thinking about. Okay. This is gonna thicken up a little bit more as it sets. So I'm gonna pass it right into this dish. This is where you could do um, the second straining if you would like, if you're worried about having any pieces in there, but this is silky smooth and the steam is fogging me up. <laughs> Just sweet, yummy, tart rhubarb heaven. You know, the rhubarb only stays good for a short period of time. Otherwise it gets really stringy and tough and the flavor goes off. So you really only have a two or three week period where it's at its best. So hopefully this recipe is coming to you in that period of time where you are, where you can still get really fresh and wonderful rhubarb. Let's have a taste. Still hot. I'm not super patient when it comes to food. I haven't tasted that in a year since last spring. 
and it's absolutely perfect. It's so good. Um, make sure you leave a comment below the video. I would love to hear what you would pair with your rhubarb curd, and I'd love to hear what you think of this recipe. Thank you for traveling along with me today as we went around the farm. We counted our blessings, all the things that there are to be thankful for, and we made something delicious together. Cheers.